So, welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankaray's Academy. So, today topic of discussion is two editorials which we have taken from the newspaper Indian Express and the Hindu. So, we are going to have a holistic approach from the mains perspective for both these editorials and without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. So, this editorial unwarranted curbs is given in the newspaper the Hindu. So, what this editorial says is that the central government has framed the rules in the year 2023. So, based on this, a fact checking unit was formed. So, recently, this fact check unit was struck down by the Bombay High Court. So, why they struck down is that they said this fact checking unit is vague as well as unconstitutional because it is undermining the citizen's ability to freedom of speech which comes under the article 19 it is also saying that the government is stopping the public's ability to criticize them so on this basis they have struck down this fact checking unit so based on this we will see about the fact checking unit in a detailed way from the mains perspective so now let's start with the first question which is critically analyze the role of fact check unit of the Press Information Bureau in combating the misinformation in India. So, this is the question given. Now, let us see the content. So, the main purpose for establishing the fact check units to counter the misinformation. So, in this era of social media, any news, be it positive or negative, it is spreading in a rapid manner. So, to counter any misinformation about the policies and activities of government, so, this unit was established in the year 2019 and it was officially empowered in the year 2023. So, this unit has a statutory authority under the information technology rules. So, what is the function of this fact check unit? First is to verify the claims about the government policies, regulations, announcements and measures. So, they will verify the claim. This is the first function of the fact check unit. Next is the, they will dispel the myths, rumors and the false claims. If suppose there is a false information about the government of India policies. So, they will publish a notice in the PIB saying that this is the false information. They will also give what is the accurate information regarding the concern topic. So, next we have the third important activity of the fact check unit which is to provide the accurate and reliable information to the public. So, if you want to see any information regarding the government policies and action, you can visit the PIB fact check unit. So, what is the need of this fact check unit? As already said, it will counter the spread of fake and false messages and the misleading information about the government of India functioning. So, in this way, it will stop or uh, avoid any socio-economic and political conflict because of the misleading content. And they will also help us to distribute the accurate and the precise information about the government of India. So, they will also issue the rebuttals, which is I explained already, if there is any fake information, they will publish it in the PAB rebuttal column. Next, we have the important function, which is to protect the public trust in the democratic institutions. If suppose there is a many misleading information about the functioning of government, it can lead to socio-economic and political conflicts. So, if uh, accurate information is provided and a rebuttal is issued, it will help to prevent the economic and political conflicts, thereby it will protect the public trust in the democratic institutions. So, these are the main function and the need of FCU, which is to counter the fake information and provide the accurate information, thereby it will prevent the socio-economic conflicts and protect the trust of people in the democratic institution. So, now we will see what is the organizational setup of this fact check unit. So, the main head of this fact check unit is the senior DG or ADG level officer from the IAS, which is the Indian Information Service. So, under them we have IAS officers who handle the day to day operation in each unit and they will report to the principal director general of the PIB, which is the Press Information Bureau. So, having discussed about the organizational setup, now we will see what is the working mechanism of this FCU. So, if you are a user of FCU who wanted a reliable and a factually checked information, you can 
send a query to the fact check unit. So, this can be done with the help of a mail or a WhatsApp or any web portal. So, when this query is sent to the fact check unit, so they will categorize based on the relevance to the government of India. So, if it is relevant, the process will proceed. If it is irrelevant, it is rejected in this process. So, if it is relevant to government of India, what do is they will investigate. How they will investigate is that they will verify with the uh, related government of India organization and with the open data sources available with them. They will also use many technological tools to verify and investigate the data on which the query is raised. So, after investigation, if they feel that there, there is a requirement to further publish and give information regarding the query raised, they will publish it in the social media. So, the, in this way, they will warn the public regarding the misleading information. I already said they will categorize the query. So, this query is categorized into three. One, it is fake, where the information is totally factually wrong. In this way, it can mislead the public and cause socio-economic conflicts. So, this is the first category. Next, we have the true content, which is factually and legally true. So, no action will be done on this query as it is already true. Next, we have the misleading content. So, in any matter, if only partially true matter is only presented in the public and it can affect the decision of the public, these content are named as the misleading content, which are the partially true content. These are the th three categories of the queries. So, these are the three categories of queries after the process of fact checking. So, they do not have any legal authority to impose punishment. They have only the power to publish the rebuttals as well as to give the accurate information. So, in India, but there are many uh, legal authorities against the spread of fake messages. For example, one we have the IPC section 153 and 153A. We also have the IT rules which uh, under which uh, we have section 6060. So, both these rules are uh, helping us to give punishment to ones who will spread uh, the fake message. So, what are the challenges faced by the fact check unit? One is the constitutional validity. So, we have two articles, article 19 class 1 and article 19 class 2. So, article 19 class 1 is saying that freedom of speech and expression. but Article 19 class 2 is saying freedom of speech and expression along with the reasonable restriction. So, this reasonable restriction is given on the grounds of public order as well as to ensure the security and sovereignty of the nation. So, to balance this both is a challenging one. Also, there is a vagueness of terms like fake and false. What constitutes fake and what constitutes false is highly changing according to one's perspective. So, the vagueness of the term can be misused to spread false information. And third, we have the government overreach. As already said, this fact checking unit can undermine the rights of the people in the democracy. Actually, the role of democracy is to enable the people to express their opinions. But by establishing a fact checking unit, this can undermine the ability of the people to express their opinions. So, this is considered as a government overreach. So, this is creating a potential for censorship of the government information. So, next we have the self-harbor protection. So, self-harbor protection is nothing but any social media company is having a right or protection of what the users publish in their social media. So, to balance the regulation of the social media to perform with neutrality is also challenging. And lastly, we have a problem because to have a balance between the spread of misinformation along with the avoidance of the censorship is also a challenging one. So, in this discussion, we saw what is a fact check unit, why do we need a fact check unit, what is the function of them. We also saw what are other legal instruments which are avoiding the spread of fake messages. We saw what is the steps in fact check unit to access the authorized information. We also ended with the challenges faced by the fact check unit. So, with this we will conclude the discussion on this article. So, this editorial regarding the Manipur issue is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. So, for more than a year now, that is almost 16 months, 
this ethnic conflict is happening in the state of Manipur. So, the major ethnic communities involved are the Kukis and the Metis. Even though government has taken some major steps and efforts, the violence is emerging again and again. So, that is why the Ministry of Home Affairs, Amit Shah, has proposed or suggested for a dialogue between the ethnic communities to resolve this issue. He is also planning to devise a road map to solve these issues. So, what are the government action taken in this? First is the idea of dialogue to be conducted between the uh, ethnic communities to solve the problem. We also have the unified command of security forces which was formed in the year 2023. So, even this unified command of security forces is having a tension between the state government of Manipur. So, these are the issues. Now, with this backdrop, let us see about the challenges and how to deal with the challenges from the mains perspective. Critically examine the underlying causes of Manipur conflict and suggest a comprehensive way forward to restore the peace and stability. So, we can divide this question into two parts. First, we have to address what is the causes. The causes is the keyword here and next part is the way forward which we have to suggest to deal with the challenges in this region. So, now let us start with the challenges in Manipur. First is the ethnic tensions and violences. So, for more than decades, conflicts has been occurring between the ethnic groups such as the Metis and the Kukis. Because there is a failure of dialogue between these two communities, this has deepened and led to the ethnic polarization of these communities. So, the problem of negotiations have now turned into the problem of power struggle and resource allocation issues. So, this is the first challenges. Next is the governance and the political leadership. I already said about the unified command of security forces which was established in the March 2023. So, there is a serious conflict between the CM's office and the unified command. So, this has led to the sidelining and the disempowerment of the chief ministers. This is the claim of the editorial given. So, if they say that the breakdown of security is due to the lack of leadership and the accountability. So, the unified command which was set up in the 2023 which was formed to restore the order has been ineffective due to the strained relationship between the state government and the security forces. So, because of this, this led to the suspension of free movement between the Manipur and the Myanmar. So, this suspension of the free movement regime is threatening to undermine the regional stability as well as the India's act is policy. The fourth major challenge is the social fragmentation. Because of the lack of dialogue and the inclusiveness to address the grievance, it has led to further fragmentation within the society. So, this has made the peaceful coexistence even more difficult. Another major challenge is the economic disruption. So, because of frequent violence and the instability, it has disrupted the normal life because the violence has impacted the trade, commerce, employments, which has worsened the socio-economic condition of the region. So, the major challenges mentioned in this are ethnic tensions and the violence, the governance and the pol political leadership. Along with it, we also have the security challenges, social fragmentation and the economic disruption. So, having seen about the challenges in this region, now we will see how to deal with these challenges. The first solution could be the all-party dialogue and consensus. The center can convene all the major party by involving leaders from various communities. So, this can help us to build a consensus and promote peace. We can also build an inclusive representation by ensuring that voices from all the ethnic groups such as the Metis and Kukis and Nagas are included in a dialogue to create a common framework for the purpose of peaceful coexistence. So, another important way to deal with this problem is to restore the governance. So, this can be done by a new leadership and an accountability. So, by changing the leadership, we can restore the faith in governance process and enable a impartial decision making. 
So, in this case, the political stability and a strong relationship is very crucial, which is lacking right now. We can also reform the security command. This can be done by establishing a clear chain of command between the CM's office and the security forces. So, by establishing this, we can ensure coordinated effort to maintain the law and order. So, talking about the transparency and accountable security measures, we can strengthen the security by addressing the bias and insufficiency in the security forces. So, by impartially handling the complaints and by conducting fair security measures, we can restore the public trust. So, another way is that we can work on a diplomatic framework with the Myanmar to manage the border issues without disrupting the cross-border movement. So, this cross-border movement is crucial to both the regions. We can also take some long-term development initiatives. So, this can be done by addressing some core issues such as the land disputes, reservation and the access to resources. So, this can be done by the impartial committees and transparent policies to reduce the community tensions. We can also introduce schemes to rehabilitate the affected communities, particularly focusing on the job creation, education and the skill development. So, by focusing on these areas, we can boost the local economy. So, and finally, to conclude, the government should initiate the trust building measures between different ethnic groups. So, by building the trust, they can increase the inter-community dialogue and reconciliation, thereby solving the ethnic conflict which is existing in this region. So, with this, we will conclude the discussion on this editorial. So, I have an important announcement. Shankar IAS Academy is conducting many mains test series and many questions from this series has been reflected in the UPSC mains which is occurring currently. So, to see the reflection of the Shankar IAS Academy mains question in UPSC, you can check in the link given below in the description. We have come to end of today's video. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your feedbacks as comment and do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.